A very good evening friends. I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by the Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 22nd November 2023. Here are the list of news article which we are going to discuss now. Okay, let's get into discussion. Look at this beautiful image of an one-horned rhino grazing in the Pobitora wildlife sanctuary. Today, in our discussion, let us see some prelims related facts about one-horned rhino and Pobitora wildlife sanctuary. Firstly, let us take up one-horned rhinos. See, the greater one-horned rhino or Indian rhino is the largest of the rhino species. It is found only in the Indian subcontinent. Know that once it was widespread across the entire northern part of Indian subcontinent. But sadly, the rhino population has gone down considerably. This is because they were hunted for sport or they were killed as agricultural pests. This pushed the species very close to extinction and by the start of 20th century, where only 200 wild greater one-horned rhinos were remained. See, the recovery of the greater one-horned rhino is among the greatest conservation success story of Asia. Thanks to the protection and management from both the Indian and Nepalese wildlife authorities, the greater one-horned rhino was brought back from the brink of extinction. Today's population have increased to around 3,700 rhinos in the northeastern India and the Tarai grasslands of Nepal. See, this is about the basics of rhino. Let us see the characteristics of one-horned rhino. The greater one-horned rhino is identified by a single black horn which is about 8 to 25 inches long and a grey-brown hide with skin folds. See, this gives rhino an armor-plated appearance. See, the species is mostly solitary in nature but there are also instances of adult rhinos grazing together. Let us see the food habits of rhino. See, they primarily graze with a diet which is consisting of almost entirely of grasses as well as leaves, fruits and aquatic plants. Know that the preferred habitat of a one-horned rhino is alluvial floodplains and the areas containing tall grasslands along the foothills of Himalayas. Earlier, the rhino population was found distributed in the Gangetic Plains. But today, the species is restricted to the small habitats in Indo-Nepal Tarai region and Northern West Bengal and Assam. See, in India, rhinos are mostly found in the Kasiranga National Park, Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary, Orang National Park, Manas National Park in Assam. In West Bengal, they are found in the Jaldapara National Park and Gurumora National Park. In Uttar Pradesh, they are found in Dudwara Tiger Reserve. Now, let us see the threat of rhinos. Some of the threat for rhinos include habitat loss, agricultural expansion, human settlements and poaching. Asian rhinos mainly survive in isolated areas in a small population. So, they were at greater risk from inbreeding, natural disaster and disease. An important point to be noted here is that IUCN status of one-horned rhino is vulnerable. Know that it is also protected under Appendix 1 of the sites. It is also listed in Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. This is all regarding the one-horned rhinos. Moving forward, let us take a Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary. See, the Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary is located in the suburbs of Gauhati, Assam. It is located in the flood plains of Brahmabudra River. The sanctuary consists of Raja Mayong Reserve Forest and Pobitora Reserve Forest. Know that 3 by 4th of the wildlife sanctuary is covered by wet grasslands which supports a wide variety of species. One of the important animals found in this wildlife sanctuary is greater one-horned rhino. Actually, this sanctuary has the highest density of rhinos in the world. Know that one or two rhino species are living in a 38.8 square kilometer area. Due to this high density, the government has taken efforts to translocate the rhinos to other areas where there is low density. See, Povitora wildlife sanctuary also has the second highest rhino concentration. That is the second largest population of rhinos in the state of Assam. This is second only after Kasiranga National Park, Assam. So, Pobitora is sometimes referred as Mini Kasiranga. Some of the other significant fauna that you can find in this wildlife sanctuary are fishing cat, feral buffaloes, Chinese pangolins and peasant tailed jacana, which is a bird. That is all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the one-horned rhinos, the characteristics of one-horned rhinos. And in the second part, we saw about the Pobitora wildlife sanctuary. See, with this learned points, let us conclude this discussion and let us take up the next news article for our analysis. 
look at this editorial article this article is speaking about the concerns surrounding local reservation in private sector jobs recently the punjab and haryana high court quashed the haryana state employment of local candidates act 2020 see this act was aimed at providing 75% reservation to haryana state domiciles in the private sector jobs while quashing this act the high court held that this act was violative of the right to equality under article 14 and right to freedom under article 19 of the constitution the court further opined that the haryana's reservation was against the right of the citizens of the rest of the country the court also argued that the act was imposing unreasonable restrictions on the workers right to move freely throughout india and the court also observed that these types of reservation will encourage other states to come up with the similar restrictions ultimately this will create artificial walls throughout india by quoting this concern punjab and haryana high court quashed the reservation act which was brought up by the haryana government this editorial article provides us some insights regarding the challenges in providing local reservation in the private sector jobs the article also suggests some measures to protect workers rights see this is the crux of the article now in the discussion we will analyze the pros and cons associated with providing local reservation in private sector jobs we will approach this discussion through mains answer writing approach first let's look at the question the question is what's the rationale behind the implementation of a job quota for locals in the private sector moreover explain the challenges associated with such policies see this question is given for 15 marker and we have answer it within 250 words let us see the syllabus which is befitting this question this question can be asked in the gs paper 1 under the syllabus topic of social empowerment communalism regionalism and secularism it can also be tasked in the gs paper 2 under the topic of government policies and interventions for development in various sectors and issues arising out of their design and implementation see this is the syllabus now come back to question see this question is a simple and straight forward question firstly we have to write points favoring the implementation of job quota for locals in the private sector secondly we have to write the challenges in implementing such quotas in the private sector and a note that in conclusion part we can provide some step to safeguard the workers rights this is how we are going to answer this question let us start with the introduction since the question is about the local reservation of jobs in the private sector in the intro part we will explain why there is a need for such reservation policies in india we are having country wide reservation for central government jobs on the other hand states are also empowered to provide reservation in the state government jobs but in the private sector there is no such reservation policies so any citizen from any state can work in a private job in any other indian states this sometimes ends up in a job shortage for the local people this factor had contributed to bringing in the concept of reservation in private sector jobs various states like andhra pradesh haryana jharkhand madhya pradesh and so on have also enacted the reservation policies to their state people in private jobs these policies are aimed at offering private jobs to those who belong to that states the state government's main aim is to address the local job shortages and to satisfy their democratic electorates this is the introduction part now moving on to the body part of the answer in the body part first we will understand the idea behind the implementation of job quota see there are many reasons we will see them one by one firstly providing local reservation in private job will help to address the local unemployment issues know that allowing all the people in india to apply for the private job in any state deprives the job chances of the local people so providing local reservation will help the local people to get employment in their private sector jobs this in turn will help to address poverty and it empowers the local youths secondly providing local reservation will help to boost the local economy see most of the people who earn in other state tend to divert their earnings back to their home state so the earned money can be spent in the home state rather than the earned state this enhances the economy of the home state know that it empowers the home state at the cost of other states so by providing local reservation the local people will get more employment and they use their earnings in their state itself this will enhance the local economy of a state thirdly local reservation can increase the employees productivity see local reservation allows the people to work in their states so the combined effects of familiar language 
சரௌண்டிங் என்விரான்மெண்ட் அண்ட் ரெடியூஸ்டு கார் லிவிங் காஸ்ட் வில் டெல் டு சாட்டிஸ்ஃபை த எம்ப்ளாயி டு த மோஸ்ட் ஸோ திஸ் வில் ஹெல்ப் டு இன்க்ரீஸ் தேர் ப்ரொடக்டிவிட்டி அண்ட் ஃபோர்த்லி த லோக்கல் ரிசர்வேஷன் ஹெல்ப்ஸ் டு அட்ரஸ் த ப்ராப்ளம் ஆஃப் மைக்ரேஷன் அண்ட் கன்ஜஷன் இன் சிட்டிஸ் மோஸ்ட்லி பீப்புள் ஃப்ரம் வேரியஸ் ஸ்டேட் யூஸ் டு மைக்ரேட் டு பிக் மெட்ரோ சிட்டிஸ் இன் ஆர்டர் டு கெட் ஜாப்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் த ஹியூஜ் காம்படிஷன் ஃபார் ப்ரைவேட் ஜாப்ஸ் இன் தேர் ஓன் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் திஸ் ஃபேக்டர் இன்க்ரீசஸ் த கன்ஜஷன் இன் சிட்டிஸ் so local reservation will helps to address the problem of migration and congestion of cities these are the main ideas behind the implementation of a job quota for locals in the private sector now moving on to the second part of the body see in the second part we will understand the challenges in implementing a job quota in the private sector firstly local reservation in private jobs deprives the fundamental rights which are guaranteed under article 14 See, Article 14 provides for equality before law or equal protection of law within the territory of India. This means the central or state government should treat everyone equal before law. See, providing local reservation accords favor to one particular people at the cost of others. This affects the fundamental rights under Article 14. Secondly, the local reservation policies discourage the businesses from making investment. local reservation deprives the businesses to employ skilled and qualified people from other states this factor discourages the company to invest in states that having the local reservation policies thirdly the local reservation policy affects the unity and integrity of indian people local reservation policies widen the gap between local and non local people it will even discourage brotherhood feelings among the indians so in the long term this policies will defeat the fundamental indian principle of unity in diversity and finally this policies will act as a road block to labor reforms see indian government is pushing labor reforms to ease the working condition of the indians who are working in various state so pushing the local reservation hinders the progress of labor reforms see these are some of the challenges in implementing job quota in the private sector having completed the body part let us move on to the conclusion See India is a democratic country and it has the set of fundamental principles some of the rights guaranteed under article 19 empowers the indian citizen to carry out profession in any part of india so the state government should need to uphold the unity of indian citizen rather than affecting it the state government can create suitable policies or scheme to reduce the income inequalities and unemployment rather than providing local reservations the state governments can also carry out large scale skill development practices to increase the capability of the local peoples this will equip the local people to meet the criteria and the skills which are required for the businesses see in this way you can give a apt conclusion for this answer see this is the model conclusion which we have given if you have any alternative conclusion feel free to write and post it in our comment section see with this learned points let us conclude this discussion and let us take up the next news article for our analysis look at this news article it talks about a report published by organization for economic cooperation and development or oecd the report found that the developed countries fell short of their promise to jointly mobilize 100 billion dollar a year know that this fund was aimed towards climate mitigation and adaptation needs of the developing countries we should know the basic to understand it better See in COP15 also known as Paris summit the developed countries promised that it would raise 100 billion a year fund for mitigation and adaptation needs of the developing countries they promised that this will be mobilized within the year of 2020 but this report noted that this promise was not kept by the developed countries this is the crux of the article in our news analysis let us see about OECD from our prelims perspective First of all what is Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development or OECD See OECD is an intergovernmental economic organization comprising of 38 member countries Know that these countries are committed to democracy and free market economy It was signed in 1960 by 18 European nations plus United States and Canada Know that it came into force in 1961 an important point from our exam point of view is that india is not a member but a key economic partner of oecd know that this oecd was headquartered in paris france this is all about the basics of oecd now let us see a brief history of oecd 
from our exam perspective. See, OECD was founded in 1948 as Organization for Economic European Economic Cooperation (OEEC). See, it was established to oversee the Marshall Plan for post-war reconstruction of Europe, which was given after World War II, when. United States and Canada joined in 1961 this organization was renamed as OECD let us see the functions of OECD firstly OECD plays a critical role in promoting global economic stability it does this by publishing and updating a model tax convention that is used as a blueprint for assigning various tax rights of our various countries for example OECD developed a global minimum taxation framework that applies a standard minimum tax rate for all the corporates worldwide see it proposed a corporate minimum tax of 15% on foreign profits of large mnc's this move would fetch developing countries a new annual tax revenue of 150 billion dollars a year let us see the second function see oecd is responsible for providing economic studies assessments statistical databases and projections on global economic outlook Let us see the reports which are published by OECD. OECD publishes International Migration Outlook, Better Life Index, and it also coordinates Program for International Students Assessment or PISA. Let us see the third function. Thirdly, it aims to eradicate bribery and other financial crimes around the world. Know that OECD also maintains a blacklist for those countries that it considers to be uncooperative tax haven countries. Finally. it works in the g20 countries to eliminate tax evasion and dodging by profitable firms and it encourages the members to push for various tax reforms let us see an example oecd developed a two pillar plan to combat tax evasion of mnc's and which is technically called base erosion profit shifting these are about the various functions of oecd see in this discussion we saw about the latest report of oecd regarding green finance in our analysis part we saw about the genesis of oecd its members and the various functions of oecds with this learned points let us conclude this discussion and let us take up the next news article for our analysis look at this beautiful image from the science page article the lights seen in the image are called northern lights which is otherwise called aurora borealis recently this lighting phenomenon was observed over the north atlantic ocean in norway With this news as a base, let us understand some important points about auroras. See, auroras are natural lights that appear in the sky. The aurora lights are only visible during the night sky. The auroras usually appear in the lower polar regions of the earth. Note that if the aurora occurs in the southern hemisphere, they are called southern lights or aurora australis. On the other hand, if they occur in the northern hemisphere, they are called northern lights or aurora borealis. Now let us move on to see how auroras are formed. See, auroras occur when electrically charged particles such as proton and electron collide with the gases present in the Earth's upper atmosphere. When these charged particles collide with the gases, it produces tiny flashes. This tiny flash appears like a colorful light in the sky. This is what we termed as aurora. Now, where this charged particle comes from? See, this charged car particles are coming from the sun. as we all know sun is made up of electrically charged particles like protons and electrons these particles continuously froze from the surface of the sun to other planets in the solar system this phenomenon of flow of charged particles from the sun to other planets is called solar winds see solar winds are continuously flowing towards the earth also see most of the solar winds are blocked by the earth's magnetic field from entering the earth atmosphere but from time to time the solar winds get stronger and penetrates into the earth magnetic field so the stream of particles in the solar wind interact with the gases present in the magnetic field in this process will create a magnificent auroras now let us see coloring pattern of the auroras the aurora can appear in a variety of color like green red blue yellow orange the color of the aurora vary depends on the altitude and it also depending on the kind of atom which is involved in a collision of electrically charged particles for example if the charged particles collide with oxygen atom at high altitude in their atmosphere this interaction will produce red light likewise if the particle collide with oxygen at lower altitudes it produces green yellow lights then if the particle collide with a nitrogen gas it produces reddish and bluish lights similarly 
if the charged particles strike with the hydrogen or helium atoms it can produce blue and purple auroras respectively that's all about this news discussion in this discussion we saw about the auroras and the basics behind the magnification phenomena this is all about this discussion and let us take up the next news article for our analysis this news article is about the recent order of the supreme court a bench headed by chief justice of india dy chandrachud pronounced that children living in child care institutions whose parents had not visited them for over a year or had an unfit parents or guardians should be identified and brought into the adoption pool of the country the court also directed the states and union territories to compile the data on the potential children for adoption and ensure the registration in the caras online portal child adoption resource information and guidance system or carings this is to reduce the mismatch between the children available for adoption and prospective adoptive parents know that as of october 2023 2146 children were available for adoption in india while 30669 prospective adoptive parents have been registered for adoption see this is about the news article in this context let us see some important points about the central adoption resource authority or cara see central adoption resource authority or cara was founded in 1990 and it was provided with the status of statutory body under juvenile justice act 2015 know that it functions under the ministry of women and child development wcd government of india see cara primarily deals with the adoption of orphan abandoned and surrendered children through its associated or recognized adoption agencies it functions as a nodal body for adoption of indian children moving forward let us see the functions of cara firstly cara is responsible for supervising and regulating the adoption procedures within india it also aims to promote in country adoptions and ensure the welfare of the child it facilitates and coordinates the interstate adoption in collaboration with respective state agencies secondly cara regulates and oversees the inter country adoptions it is actually designated as the central authority to deal with the inter country adoption know that this was in accordance with the provisions of hay convention on inter country adoption 1993 see this convention was ratified by the government of india in 2003 thirdly cara is authorized to create and update the regulations which is deals with the adoption and related matters as deemed necessary from time to time fourthly cara also maintains child adoption resource information and guidance system or carings portal this portal is actually a database of children who are available for adoption and their respective uh, adoptive parents as we have already seen in the introduction part of our analysis finally cara monitors and regulates the various bodies involved in the adoption process including state adoption resource agencies specialized adoption agencies authorized foreign adoption agencies child welfare committee and district child prospective units or dpu these are some of the important functions of cara finally before concluding let us see the general procedure for adoption in india see firstly the child welfare committees cwc must declare a child as legally available for adoption the database of children who are legally available for adoption will be updated in the carings portal then the prospective adoptive parents or pap should also register themselves with the caring portal after a match the specialized adoption agencies will conduct a home study report of the prospective adoptive parents this report will help determine the suitability of the respective parents if the prospective adoptive parents are suitable the saa will complete the adoption process after this the court will issue the adoption order for the adoption of children know that following adoption cara will conduct post adoption follow up studies for a period of 2 years these are the various steps involved in the child adoption process in india here note that hindu adoption and maintenance act 1956 which will govern the adoption procedures for hindu jain sikhs and buddhist children and juvenile justice act care and protection of children also provides a legal framework for adoption in india see this is all about the discussion in this discussion we saw about the important social body called cara 
and moreover we saw the general adoption procedure process in india for our better understanding that's all about the news discussion with this let us move on to the next part of video that is to discuss the preliminary practice questions today we are having four questions let us solve them one by one see the first question this is a description about a national park which we should find out let us see the description this national park is home to more than 2200 indian 100 rhinoceros which accounts for two third of their total world population it was formed in 1908 on the recommendation of mary curzon who is the wife of lord curzon this park is located on the edge of eastern himalayan biodiversity hotspot in the year 1985 it was declared as a world heritage site by unesco this national park was declared as a tiger reserve in 2006 and also this park is recognized as the important bird area by birdlife international see out of this description note this description that is this national park approximately has 2/3 of the total world rhino population see from this information itself we can devise that the correct option is option d kasiranga national park see the second question consider the following statements about oecd or organization of economic cooperation and development the first statement oecd was founded in 1948 as the organization for european economic cooperation or oeec this statement is correct because this we have discussed in our news analysis see the second statement its member countries are predominantly high income countries which we have also discussed in our analysis so this statement is also correct third statement it is headquartered in bern switzerland see the statement is wrong because in our analysis we saw that the headquarters of oecd lies in paris france so this statement is wrong see the fourth statement its main function is to promote global economic stability which is also correct so the third statement alone is wrong so the correct option is option c see the third question the aurora seen in the earth polar region are caused by which of the following statement see see the third statement interaction of solar wind with the earth magnetic field see this statement is correct because we have seen the mechanism behind the formation of auroras in our analysis so the correct option is option c see the final question of the day consider the following statements about prospective adoptive parents related to adoption in india see the first statement states that a pap should be economically stable and should not have any life threatening medical condition see from our common sensical perspective we can easily say this statement is correct see the second one parents who have biological daughter cannot be considered as pap see this statement is wrong because parents can have their own biological son or daughter and still they will be considered as a pap and can adopt a child so this statement is wrong see the third statement a single female is eligible to adopt a child of any gender this is correct see the final statement a single male child shall not be eligible to adopt a girl children see this statement is also correct so eliminating the statement 2 we can say that three statements are correct so the correct option is option c if you like today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more update regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankar ais academy thank you for listening